for me, what was most impressive about this Bills and Cowboys game was the Bills defense because this Cowboys offense has been flying. This Cowboys offense, um, Dak Prescott specifically has been playing amazing and it just wasn't there. And part of it was that the Bills could run as much as they wanted. James Cook finished with 179 yards on 25 carries. He could run as much as he wanted to run. And that changes the, that kind of changes the way the game is forced the Cowboys to maybe press a little bit more. And maybe that played some role in it. But for the entire game, the defense looked like they just had the Cowboys number. And to me, if the Bills defense is playing that way, then that is a that is a different team that we're looking at, Tucker. That is a team that you are, you know, you're always scared of Josh Allen. If the defense is playing that way, you're you're much more scared of the Bills, I think. Yeah, they look like a, a much more complete team. And it's funny for a team that, you know, came in, even though they were seven six, they were eleventh place in, in the AFC with all the tiebreakers yeah. and everything. And we talked about it a little bit last week. Like if they made the playoffs, they were the you know the seventh seed or the sixth seed. It's a good chance they could be favored on the road in Wild Card Weekend just because they have Josh Allen. And you're right, the way this defense you know kind of set the tone all day. Like it was a sloppy game. It, it was gross weather wise. But Cowboys averaged three point four yards per play today. They they were never really you know got anything going, especially early on when the Bills jumped out to that big lead in the first half and. I mean, but this has also kind of been the way the Cowboys have been this year. Like, their offense has struggled on the road, especially outside. Like, they, they've put up huge numbers at home in a dome. But you look at, you know, when they've played on the road, they put up 33 in Carolina, but, you know, 23 in Philadelphia, 10 at San Francisco, 20 at, at the Chargers, only 16 against Arizona on the road. I mean, they're a different team when they're not in Dallas. I actually didn't know that those splits. Uh, that's that's interesting. I actually did not know that splits. And I wonder, I mean, now that raises some questions about the playoffs, because as we talked about, as Curtis mentioned at the top, let's say the Eagles are able to take the the division. The 49ers look almost, you know, locked into the number one seed. Then the Cowboys are looking at a situation where they're going to play a lot of road games. And that's concerning. You mentioned the Bucks. Whoever wins that is probably based on what we saw today, and we'll get to that later, it's probably the Bucks or the Saints. I think, Curtis, you probably are a little bit more scared of the Bucks at this point than you would be any of the other two teams if you're stuck there in that fifth spot. Yeah, on the the Bucks have the potential. They have enough players. It's just, will the coaching staff step uh, stub their own toe? And, and I think we might see that with Todd Bowles, and that, that's why that division is what it is. There's the, Those teams all seem to have some sort of problem and it's always an internal problem I, we'll get to the falcons at some point and then to discuss that but the for the cowboys too today it was a typical mike mccarthy undisciplined team with silly penalties they took a a roughing the passer uh hitting the kicker and then a what was the other one a roughing the passer? there was three times they had the bill stop at the end just took ridiculously foolish defensive penalties and that's that's what if you do that against the eagles or the 49ers you're, you're you stand no chance those teams are we see the 49ers score every single possession they will make you pay for every single penalty you take 